So first, if everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My name is Erica Pereira, and I am the co-advisor with Ms. Jocelyn Farias for this chat. Tonight, we have a few acknowledgements that we'd like to begin with. First, we would like to publicly thank our custodial staff for all of their hard work in preparing this location for this event. From preparing it last night, pre-cleaning again before the event, as well as the setup of all of the chairs, bleachers, and the takedown after we leave. So I'd like to thank them with a round of applause. We'd also like to thank Ms. Mrs. Pecker, who's up in the back filming with Blue Raider Studios. This event is being live streamed, and it will also be recorded and placed on our website for everyone to view afterward. I also want to thank our students and families, again, for your time, dedication, and patience as we had to redesign this entire application process and move the event a little bit later in the year. So I want to thank you very much, congratulate you, and I would like to turn the microphone over now to Dr. Welford. Good evening, students, and congratulations. And good evening, parents, and congratulations. I should be very proud of your students. And I know you I believe in my career, this is the 20th National Honor Society induction that I have been to, and 21st if you count my own. But never ever in the past 20 years have I ever been more impressed with a group of inductees than I am looking at you out here. I am so proud and pleased to be here tonight. During my career, I've always seen inductees who never missed a day of school, had straight A pluses, who join our leaders in every single athletic or music event that they have group that they have joined. And I see those people here tonight too, but that is not why I'm impressed. The reason I'm impressed is because you went through the application process to the National Honor Society in the middle of a pandemic. In times when the answer would, the easy answer, would have been to slack off and use the pandemic as learning as a crutch, you persevered and you fought for your education. In an online world where it would be easy to do the wrong things, not show up to class in time, put forth maybe not one's best effort on a test, you have, you have the academic integrity to learn for the sake of learning and do what's right. In doing this, you are the definition of scholarship. You've also turned your cameras on when Mr. Petty or Mr. Lawrence begged you to. You sent and had the pictures to Senora, and you sent me almost a thousand messages of thanks and gratitude to share with your teachers and your peers in anonymous shout out emails to each other. You follow one way directional hallways and act as role models for freshmen who had no idea how to navigate the hallways of Somerset Berkeley Regional High School, never mind in the middle of a pandemic. In doing this, you are the definition of leadership. In times when there was nowhere open for you to complete community service, you still found a way. You helped out your neighbors, you sent cards to the sick and the shut-in, you made blankets and masks for community members, and you helped brighten other people's days. 
In doing this, you are the definition of service. And I imagine that, as my colleagues have been for me over the past year, you were there for each other. When the times are tough, you picked each other up and you said, keep going. You listened when your friends voiced frustration, you cared when others were down, and you relied on your family and friends when maybe you were having a bad day. And in doing so, you are the definition of character. This afternoon, I was fortunate enough to facilitate a discussion where some of your peers uh, were asked the skills that they believe they need in order to be a successful graduate or an adult and journey to the next phase of their life, be it college or career or the military. And one of the responses that the students gave me was that we need patience, understanding, kindness, and perseverance. And as I look at you all sitting in front of me right now, I think that this group already gets it, and what a wonderful world we're going to have because of that. Congratulations on your induction to the National Honor Society. Continue to strive to be the best for yourselves, and continue to pick each other up and bring out the best in each other. Congratulations.
Good evening, inductees, teachers, parents, and guardians. My name is Aidan Karpitz, president of the National Honor Society, and I would like to congratulate each and every one of you on your induction to the National Honor Society. You stand here on this happy precipice of your academic career as the premier representatives of our high school. First of all, before I forget and begin, let's just take a second to appreciate your accomplishment. You've worked so hard over these past three or four years. You're thick and thin, you've kept dry on the prize, you've been rewarded for it. Seriously, it's not an easy thing. You ought to be proud of yourselves, each and every one of you, for your amazing accomplishment. Today, my fellow delegates, I would like to talk to you all about the value of leadership. Now, when you think of leaders, who do you think of? Probably famous politicians, leaders of successful businesses, prominent voices in your community. People that you know and listen to on a day-to-day -day basis. Famous historical leaders that have led our world through some of the most tumultuous times in human history. But I'm not going to give you your billionth history lecture today, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, I'd like to present a new definition of leadership. You don't have to be famous to be a leader. You don't have to be outspoken or outgoing or extroverted. You don't have to be born a leader because everyone is born a leader. That may sound like a contradiction, but allow me to explain. Everyone is a leader in some way, shape, or form. Leadership isn't an exclusive trait. There aren't some people who have it and some who don't. Everyone has the ability and capability to be a leader, even if you don't know it. Yes, even if you think you're not a leader, the truth is you are. Just the fact that you working here hard to get this prestigious society is proving that you have the capability to set an example for your peers to follow. See, at least in my view, leadership isn't defined by how much you speak, what titles you have, or what, how much money you have. It's about three things. Empathy, flexibility, and confidence. Now, I could go through each of these things one by one and explain how they factor into leadership. But instead, I'll use a personal experience that encapsulates what I'm talking about better than any lecture could. A few months ago, I began teaching swim lessons at the Rainham Athletic Club. And through all my hours of instruction and guidance, there's one case that really stands out to me. Most kids that come in somewhat know how to swim, or at least they've been in the water before. In that case, my job is to provide the right next steps, or for them to become swimmers. But this one kid came in, and he had never been in the water before. He was uncomfortable. It made him super afraid. And this is where the first component of leadership comes in. Empathy. I've been, yeah. I've been swimming pretty much straight out of the womb, so swimming comes naturally to me. But this kid was afraid of the water. He said it made his ears hurt and it felt very uncomfortable. So in order to acclimate him to the water, I had to put myself in his shoes. Actually, let me revise that statement. When most people think about empathy, they think in terms of what would I do if I were them. Well, that way, I think it's a good start. It doesn't fully allow you to become a great leader because you are not them. What it should be is, what would I do if I had all of their existing motivations, thoughts, and feelings? Now, it's impossible to know how someone thinks, and that was also that statement is a mouthful and a half, but just attempting to put yourself in their mind is so crucial in connecting with them. So I went about taking myself out of my mind and thinking about the best way to get them comfortable. So we started up slow. First we took baby steps into the water, then we started splashing water on his head, and then we played the painting game where we painted our heads with water. And so by the end of the first lesson, he was pretty good in the water, although he saw some discomfort submerging, but pretty good work for a half an hour lesson. From there we continued to progress onto actual swimming once he was more comfortable with the water. And this is where I learned the second component of leadership, flexibility. See, at first I used to vigorously plan every lesson down to the most minute detail, going with a rigid plan. Now, I don't want anyone to go home and talk about how I told you to never plan or prepare, because believe me, that's not what I'm saying. What I did learn over the course of our lessons, though, is the importance of being flexible and fluid. One time, I came in with a plan to spend the entire lesson working on kicking, but he told me he wanted to try holding his breath underwater. So, instead of saying no, trying to force my plan onto him, I told him that we could see how long he could hold his breath. So instead of spending all the time on kicking, we spent a good 15 minutes timing and improving his breathing. 
And as a result of that, he became so much more comfortable with the water. And by the end of our lesson, he was holding his breath for nearly 13 seconds, which is quite a ways from not even being able to submerge at all. So we kept progressing with our lessons. He learned how to kick his legs to stay afloat, move his arms to keep him up, and how to breathe while swimming. Over time, he grew much more comfortable with me, and lessons became more fluid. Soon, I stopped rigid planning altogether, and just came into lesson with a general idea of what I wanted to accomplish, and let things naturally progress. Soon enough, he was open enough to where lessons became more fun. So we started playing games in order to get more comfortable with water. First, we played SpongeBob, where we would jump into the water to, among other things, visit Squidward's house, order a Krabby Patty, and then play Bike Plankton. Then there was Tsunami, where I'd grab a swimming board and imitate a shark by creating big waves. His favorite, though, at least by the end, was American Ninja Warrior, where he was always racing against this imaginary super athlete named Jim. And amazingly, he won every single time. And I still to this day get boozled as to how he did so. As inconsequential as this might seem from the outside, these games are genuinely important. And they allowed me to build up my third component of leadership, confidence. They combine my aforementioned um, empathy and flexibility in order to not only improve my confidence in myself, but also his confidence in me. It gave me a way to not only improve his swimming, but also in connecting him with him as a person and as a SpongeBob slash American Ninja Warrior watcher. It's in that confidence that ties us all together, because in the words of the great departed Kobe Bryant, if you do not believe in yourself, no one will do it for you. So fellow National Honor Society members, I have just one request for everyone here. You've accomplished so much already, and I want everyone to know that you are capable of making our world such a better place. There is a leader in everybody here, and I ask you all to tap into it. Try and think about the world from someone else's point of view. Be flexible and understand that life will fill you a few curveballs. Know that however much you fail in life, you will always be able to bounce back from any setback. Be the strength that your peers feed on. There will be bad days, of course, but the true leaders are the ones who will help others succeed through their worst. Thank you. So we basically just 
volunteered to show these kids what life is like for us. And once we learned how to creatively communicate in unconventional ways, it became so much fun. And I know some people here also participated in it, participated in it and they can say it was a good time. Lauren, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and the best part of it was that it didn't even feel like we were doing volunteer work, but it felt like we were just hanging out with these kids who happened to be from a different continent and speak a different language. We brought them all of our great American delicacies, and by that I mean fast food and pizza. And these kids had never actually seen a hamburger before, so watching their faces completely light up when they tasted it for the first time was one of the cutest things and my favorite part of the whole thing. And they would tease each other over their little crushes and even get some of us in on their jokes. And we ended up realizing that despite how far apart we lived, we actually had a lot in common and our senses of humor were kind of the same too. These kids also told us about their life in school in China where they have no recreational sports and pretty much do school all day every day. Despite the language barrier, they still managed to express their awe over the opportunities that we have here, which gave me a whole new perspective and level of appreciation for our school community. Because prior to this experience, I had always been stuck in a bubble without even realizing it. We grow up in these small towns of Somerset and Berkeley and forget that there's this whole world up there. But by directly experiencing a whole new culture and learning about the dances, foods, and experiences that make up the whole opposite side of the world and make these people who they are, it's something so truly eye-opening and life-changing. I'll never forget these kids on their last day before they left. They came up to us and they told us that they hope to come here for college one day, move here, maybe even see us again. And I can't help but hope that I was just a small part of those dreams forming. You know, service to me in the simplest form is just about taking care of other people. We don't have to cure world hunger or solve homelessness, and on the other side of things, we definitely don't have to hand out flyers for 10 hours. Trust me, handing out flyers for 10 hours is not a good time. We just have to take care of other people. And I'm not saying go to another country or find a foreign exchange program, but rather just find something you're passionate about and make it worthwhile. And I know all of you have already completed your community service or else you wouldn't be here today. And that's why I'm sharing this story with you, because I don't want you to just see yourselves as done with service, because your Aspen account says so. You may think it doesn't matter, and trust me, I did too. But by putting yourself out there and caring enough to give these kids from China a genuine experience, I learned the power of being involved in something bigger than myself and the true rewards of service. So please, I encourage you guys to not close yourself off to volunteering because you think of it as an assignment, but rather view it as an opportunity and a springboard to make an impact, learn about yourself, and just take care of each other. Thank you and congratulations again. Probably know, Kyle fought a courageous battle with cancer for two years before she passed away last month. 
So our officers will receive an additional insignia to wear on the graduation day. And of course, I'd like to thank them again. We know how difficult it is to have to do a speech in front of your peers, and so many times they've included personal events, obviously, and I think that always makes those speeches very special. So I thank them, and I appreciate all the work they've done for us this year, and I hope you enjoyed their speeches this evening. Elena Cabral, 
So if the members could please stand. 